जी सर तो वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू टू आवर लेक्चर ऑन एनवायरमेंटल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड बायो सेफ्टी टूडे वी शेल डिस्कस ऑन माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन द एनवायरमेंट एंड माइक्रोबियल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एनवायरमेंटल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी मोस्टली लार्जली डिपेंड ऑन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी बिकॉज in our, our earlier class we discussed uh, about the diversity of microorganisms and their role in geochemical nutrient cycling in the world the earth is now in present condition due to the uh, function of diverse microorganisms and microorganisms are living everywhere they are ubiquitous in nature even if you consider in Uh, bacteria uh, they are uh, available everywhere even in the very extreme environment uh, to the you know our uh, body so understanding the diversity of microorganisms and how uh, these microorganisms can be used uh, in microbial biotechnology uh, to remediate environment is an important target uh, for the researchers microorganisms in the environment uh, that there are uh, some questions why are, are they found in our earlier class i discussed they can found they can be found everywhere in this earth uh, even in the deep sea even in our intestine how diverse are they they are incredibly diverse and if you exactly want to know how diverse are they it is difficult to say because uh, our knowledge is still limited but what we understood that they are incredibly diverse even in human body uh, in an adult human uh, we are carrying 3 to 6 pounds of microorganisms and they are about 150 species more or less 150 species an adult human is carrying so you can understand how diverse are they another interesting point is that uh, when a uh, whole genome of human uh, was uh, released it has been found that 33% about 33% uh, of our genes uh, originated or derived from the microbial uh, origin that means microbes contributed uh, to our genome also so uh, human are you can say a transgenic of microorganism and it is a natural transgenic process uh, and you may ask me question how Uh, microbial genes are transferred from uh, microbial genome to the uh, human genome the answer is horizontal gene transfer if two, two organisms are very closely interact with each other uh, at cellular level there is a chance of horizontal gene transfer from one organism to another for example in case of agrobacterium tumefaciens we use in genetic engineering and biotechnology you know it is an a, a smart organisms which can uh, which has the ti uh, plus bid uh, uh, that can uh, transfer gene from agrobacterium to the plant and tumor formed due to the you know mutation in the plant and we are using agrobacterium mu uh, uh, tumefaciens or other species of agrobacteria as a tool for genetic engineering a uh, role in geochemical nutrient cycles yes uh, new uh, uh, geochemical nutrient cycles uh, are continuous due to the role of microorganisms how do they grow what are their requirements for growth and biodegradation whenever uh, you know microorganisms uh, grow on a, a 
rock uh, or mineral or any other you know uh, uh, chemical substances uh, they use those substances as the source of their energy and to get the energy they use different enzyme to break down the compound as a result uh, after breakdown uh, for example if it is a, a pesticide toxic pesticide or some toxic chemicals in genobiotics in the environment if a microorganism use it as a source of uh, energy then it degrade the, the compound as a result compound lose its toxicity to the environment and we can uh, use that microorganism as a tool for biodegradation that means as a tool for environmental biotechnology microorganisms in waste uh, treatment biodegradation and environmental cleanup as i mentioned the principle because when they use any uh, waste materials or uh, any hazardous substances if they use them as a source of their energy uh, uh, then they break down by using uh, enzyme you can understand the diversity of the enzyme uh, in microorganisms is really uh, uh, incredible a uh, huge diversity so they use specific enzyme for breakdown of specific uh, substances through a chemical uh, reaction uh, so uh, uh, substances are degraded and become uh, less toxic microbial production and products in industry this is very interesting uh, topic uh, microbes uh, uh, those are involved in biodegradation or environmental cleanup uh, scientists uh, uh, have been uh, trying to uh, isolate those, those microbes from the environment in the laboratory after isolation and purification uh, the beneficial microbes are then used uh, uh, to produce in large scale and then uh, the, that microbes are used for you know uh, the uh, a practical application sometimes some microbes we can use for the production of very useful pharmaceutical drugs like antibiotic and before uh, doing the industrial application biotechnologists often use genomic technology to understand the uh, genetic makeup of, uh, or genetic identity of that organism, so which species, which genus, as well as uh, to uh, know the uh, functional genes there, uh, that means genes involved in their functions uh, by using genomic analysis. And we also do uh, uh, many types of uh, post-genomic approaches, for example, proteomics, uh, transcriptomics to understand the uh, molecular mechanism of microorganisms function and their uh, expression of the gene. Uh, there is another approach called metagenomic. Metagenomic means uh, in case of genomic, we use only the pure, uh, um, you know, uh, DNA. That means DNA of only single organism. But in case of metagenomic, uh, approach we can uh, use uh, uh, you know mixture of the DNA that means uh, for example a uh, Burigonga river uh, water contains lots of you know microorganisms and if you take a 10 ml of Burigonga uh, 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 river water and then extract all the DNA, DNA present there and uh, by using next generation sequencer or pyro sequencer, we have a next generation sequencer, Illumina NextSec 550. So you can do, uh, uh, use that one and you know, sequence all the DNA uh, uh, present there. Uh, then by using bioinformatics software, uh, you can separate uh, 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 different groups of DNA, bacterial DNA, fungal DNA, or DNA from other organisms. And you can group them and you can quantify them, how much bacteria are there, how much fungi are there, how much uh, nematodes are there. 
and even you can separate what kind of bacteria are there, uh, genus and species analyzing the you know metagenome data released from the next generation sequencer. You need to use different softwares. So this is very interesting uh, approach and novel approach, metagenomic approach. And this approach uh, allow, allows us to and know the unculturable microorganisms because I told you before, 99% uh, microorganisms in most of the environment are not culturable. Uh, unculturable microorganisms, we can tape them by using metagenomic approaches. So uh, I previously in my uh, uh, slide, I showed Sagan and Margulis to, uh, Margulis, two uh, famous scientists that say garden of microbial delights, all of the elements crucial to global life, like oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, carbon, return to the usable form through the intervention of microbes. That means microbes also need them. This is why and uh, they are recycled by the function of microbes. And most of these elements, essential for life, they are uh, available uh, in the rocks of earth crust, you know, rocks. If you visited the Jaflong, you can see lots of rocks. So th those rocks contains different of elements and those elements are released from those rocks in the soluble form by the function of microorganisms. Ecology is based on the restorative decomposition of microbes and molds acting on plants, animals after they have died to return their valuable chemical nutrients to the total living system of the life on earth. Even in human, after the death, uh, all the, you know, uh, organic or inorganic substances present in our uh, body all uh, uh, finally uh, you know, add to the uh, earth and uh, in the geochemical nutrient cycling and microorganisms uh, decompose them, them and uh, convert them into the humus and finally the element, available nutrient element. Uh, gold lets uh, uh, grandeur the power of modal bacteria. Bacteria among the microorganisms, the most powerful a group of microorganisms uh, is the bacteria. So the first multicellular organisms do not enter the fossil record until about 580 million years ago. Uh, this is after about five sixths of life's history have passed. Bacteria have been the stairs and keepers of life's history. That means bacteria uh, is considered the earliest uh, member of the living organisms and uh, you know primitive bacteria is called archaea. Uh, where are they found? Diverse environment. Uh, answer is diverse environment. Virtually every environmental niche contain the microorganism. Extremes of pH and salinity. In our last class, I told that uh, told you uh, that uh, that. Uh, Professor Niels uh, at University of Bergen, he uh, discovered an extremophile which can live uh, and grow well at one pH. And obviously temperature required for that organism is more than 100 degrees Celsius. So you can imagine uh, if we boil something, we cannot kill 100% of uh, bacteria. Extremes of temperature and pressure. Uh, without air, yes, anaerobic condition in the intestine or other places. Growth on many chemical substances. Uh, they can grow on many chemical substances. A attached to surface on biofilms. This is very important point you should remember. Uh, most of the bacteria available in the earth, uh, almost 99% of them are remain as biofilm. Biofilm means making a, a, a layer on the surface of the uh, living organism or non-living object. Um, so uh, you can find even in the water, 
uh, like a lake or uh, ocean or uh, other uh, aquatic body, bacteria remain in the biofilm on different object, living or non-living object. Only 1% you can find in planktonic uh, phase, that means uh, living, uh, 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 you know, freely. Geothermal vents and subterranean uh, deposits, uh, they can be found. Uh, and uh, so these are the uh, places of uh, environmental condition, uh, the uh, bacteria or my, uh, microorganisms, especially bacteria are found. Where are they found? Biomass on the plant, yes. All the biomass on the plant. I told you what is biomass. Biomass is the matter uh, uh, from the, uh, you know, living organism, origin, derived from the living organism. For example, compost is a biomass. Uh, our straw, uh, straw of uh, any uh, cereals are biomass. Most culturing analysis misses over 99% of the microbial population. I told you, we have lots of culture media, uh, uh, microbiologists and chemists they discovered, but our ability to cultivate microorganisms in the laboratory is only 1% or less. Molecular techniques now reveal hidden diversity. I told you the metagenomic approach is very important uh, to uh, uh, know the uh, presence of uh, uh, unculturable bacteria in any environment. Uh, they can be heterotrophs. Heterotrophs, 5 to 20 percent biomass in seawater, and up to 80 percent of uh, the primary production are done by the heterotrophs. You know, heterotrophs and autotrophs. Autotrophs means uh, the uh, microorganism uh, which can uh, produce their own energy uh, from the uh, sunlight or like that, pro, for example, green, blue green algae or plant autotrophs, but most of them are heterotrophs. Uh, heterotrophs depend uh, uh, on other organisms or, uh, you know, chemical substances or other uh, biomass for their living. Rich by, uh, bacterial communities in subsurface strata are uh, 600 meters uh, deep, uh, up to 2 uh, uh, into 10 to the power 14 tons more than all flora and fauna equivalent to two meter layer over the planet. So they are remain, you know, on the upper surface of the sea or in the earth. But if you go deep uh, after 600 meter, then uh, their presence is limited. You can uh, browse the link, you can find more uh, information. How diverse are they? Yes, there are a diverse uh, range of species. Earliest life on the planet, I told you, uh, anaerobic, then aerobic. Three kingdoms are available. Eukaryote, plants and animals are eukaryote because they are multicellular complex organisms. Their cell are, uh, contain the uh, uh, eukaryote mat, that means nucleus is enveloped uh, in the uh, cell, uh, but in case of uh, bacteria, you know, they are prokaryote, archaea are prokaryote, they are, uh, you know, nuclear materials, that is DNA uh, or uh, genomic materials are open in the cyto uh, cytoplasm, no karyon is, uh, uh, no uh, nuclear uh, uh, nu nucle uh, a nuclear structure or, uh, uh, is present. Uh, U bacteria, uh, archaeobacteria, so eukaryotes, U bacteria, archaeobacteria, and extreme living bacteria. Yeah, three billion years ago, um, the existence of the, uh, you know, single celled organisms were uh, evolved in the earth. So uh, you can see U bacteria, uh, plants and animals, and archaeobacteria. Uh, uh, it takes uh, to come to the uh, eukaryotic organisms uh, uh, 3 billion years, it is estimated that. Uh, so still, interestingly, uh, archaeobacteria, the primitive one, they are still living, bacteria also still living. Uh, 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 they are not uh, extinct, uh, uh, although uh, new form or complex form of 
multicellular eukaryotic organisms are uh, thought to be uh, originated uh, or, uh, from the uh, you know single cellular archaea or bacteria like organisms yes how diverse are the diversity of bacteria in soil uh, you can see uh, 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 how uh, diverse this is a phylogenomic uh, uh, class uh, uh, tree, uh, but uh, it is much more than diverse here. Uh, you know, different groups uh, are shown. Uh, 16S rRNA gene sequences uh, reveal true diversity in soil DNA. Uh, 16S rRNA gene sequencing uh, we use uh, to identify the bacteria in any environment. Uh, why? Because this is a conjured sequence and very good for identification. Uh, in there are primers and very good. Uh, you can amplify this uh, 16S rRNA gene, and then you can uh, sequence and uh, easily identify the bacteria and uh, their diversity. Genomics and metagenomics, I told you, uh, uh, we can use for detection uh, as well as understanding the uh, uh, gen uh, genetic identity of the microorganisms. Chain termination sequencing used for genomes to date 800 base pair per read. So you can uh, uh, chop the DNA in small uh, fragment and then uh, you can uh, do the, uh, uh, you can use different uh, probe on each fragment so that uh, after sequencing, you can uh, join them and get the whole uh, genome. So uh, genomic uh, sequencing technology now, pyro sequencing or next generation sequencing, we can do uh, for the metagenomics. And uh, there are lots of computer softwares uh, that we can use for assembly of the, uh, you know, sequences, short reads, and then combine them to get the whole picture of DNA or RNA. And then by using, um, you know, gene bank, there is a, 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 for example, NCBI gene bank and many other gene banks. So you can uh, put uh, the sequence in the gene bank and browse it. It is called BLAST and SARS. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, get the similarities of your sequence uh, with the sequences already deposited in the gene bank and you can understand what ge uh, genus and what species are your sequence, uh, uh, you know, uh, belongs. So pyro sequencing, I, I told you, uh, 454 direct sequencing of single strands, 300 base pair per read, uh, it is repeat. Uh, use in analysis of RNA transcripts. Sometimes we use RNA transcripts. You know, transcription, uh, uh, one is genomics. Uh, when we analyze the DNA, transcriptomics means when, when we analyze the RNA. Uh, RNA is the cousin of DNA. And you know how RNA is synthesized in the cell through the transcription processes. Uh, when a gene is expressed, then it synthesizes mRNA. Uh, uh, obviously, you studied the central dogma, and the process is called uh, uh, transcript, uh, uh, transcription. And then our RNA moves from uh, uh, you know nucleus to the ribosome for synthesis of the uh, protein. And protein are, are the real players to do the job. So uh, synthesis of protein, uh, depending on the information carrying by mRNA, uh, is called. Uh, translation. So transcripts, uh, transcription is very important because we can understand the functional genes present in the genome. Uh, use uh, for rapid analysis of all DNA in environment metagenomics. Yes, I told you uh, the uh, metagenomics are used to uh, are used for rapid analysis of all DNA present in an environmental sample. Screening environment for useful genes. Yes by using transcriptomics as well as metagenomics, we can understand uh, the genes present there. Maybe we can get the new genes, new enzymes, and uh, which are useful for the, uh, you know, our biotechnology. And we can 
a clone dose uh, gene in the culturable microorganisms like E. coli and see its function and expression and even uh, gene from the unculturable microorganisms uh, we can use for industrial purposes. Uh, other host more useful like rhodococcus used in many industrial processes. Yes, there are lots of genus uh, of microorganisms. They are now being used in industrial purposes. So these are uh, uh, genomics and metagenomics which have been used for uh, understanding the genetic identity as well as well as uh, molecular switches and uh, 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 gene, uh, genes, uh, functions of the genes in the organism, in the environmental organisms, especially microorganisms. So you can uh, visit uh, the, uh, these uh, websites uh, to get more insight about microbial uh, genome sequencing, uh, and these are very, very important. So role in geochemical nutrient cycling, uh, obviously you have studied, you know, nitrogen cycle uh, or uh, sulfur cycle, phosphorus cycle. Uh, these are, we shall discuss uh, later on a, a bit. So microorganisms play a role as primary producer, uh, biodegraders and uh, consumers. Uh, biodegraders are consumers. This group is the largest group. Primary producer means, uh, you know, uh, especially the uh, plankton, uh, which carries the uh, uh, chlorophyll or chlorophyll-like pigments and can do the photosynthesis to trap the solar energy uh, to convert into the chemical energy. Uh, uh, there are some microorganisms, photosynthetic microorganisms. Uh, and critical role in cycles of many elements, um, carbon and oxygen cycle, oxygenases and oxygen fixation, nitrogen cycle, nitrogenase, denitrification, nitrogen fixation. These are very important uh, uh, geochemical nutrient cycling, which are triggered by the microorganisms, sulfur cycle, for example, sulfate reduction, phosphorus cycle, uh, these are very important. Uh, how do they grow uh, requirements for their biodegradation? They need the nutrients, uh, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, uh, many chemicals supply uh, these and micronutrients, taste, metals, vitamins, because if you want to grow them in the laboratory, you have to offer lots of you know, nutrients as well as uh, you know, vitamins and other growth uh, related uh, materials so that uh, you can grow them and they can replicate. Uh, uh, and they use electron acceptors, uh, uh, usually oxygen. Oxygen uh, for aerobic microorganisms, you must uh, uh, supply the oxygen aeration uh, during uh, the culture. Converts or burns carbon uh, substrate to uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, from the biomass, they can convert uh, uh, biomass into uh, the carbon dioxide and release the energy. Energy and biomass, that is growth. Uh, so energy is necessary. Biodegradation, how does they do? Uh, you know, uh, uh, they use organic pollutants and nutrients. Uh, you know, organic pollutant, nutrient con contain carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen, oxygen, iron, etc. elements. And their target is to uh, get the, uh, these uh, uh, essential uh, elements for their growth. So uh, uh, bacteria, for example, uh, single bacterium, uh, oxygen, uh, you know, consumption uh, 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 and control the release of energy slow for slow burning. And then uh, growth cell division taken place increase in biomass. Uh, and uh, uh, carbon dioxide evolve. So oxygen and electron acceptors crucial for biodegradation reaction taken place in the environment. Uh, here you can see substrate. You, you must need a substrate. Substrate means, for example, biomass, for example, uh, you know, uh, polluted uh, water, uh, uh, which is substrate. Substrate is the source of energy of the uh, microorganisms, which you use uh, for uh, the uh, biodegradation or, or uh, uh, you know, con uh, uh, so uh, substrate uh, uh, metabolism taken place, different metabolism means, you know, 
different biochemical reaction taking place and then uh, carbon uh, you know uh, all uh, most all the substrates in the earth uh, they contain different kind of uh, elements in, uh, and obviously if it is biomass then carbon must be present there uh, and then carbon uh, transform uh, through the uh, uh, biochemical reaction uh, uh, as carbon dioxide and uh, obviously uh, energy is released and uh, uh, by utilizing the energy the microorganism replicate and grow uh, and produce the biomass a uh, biomass means uh, the total mass of the microorganism so uh, they use a uh, different uh, electron transport chain uh, to uh, release the oxygen and convert uh, high, uh, water, uh, that means no toxic compound. And obviously, uh, ADP is uh, uh, converted into uh, ATP. Uh, you know the, uh, how ATP is, uh, ADP is converted into ATP uh, in the uh, membrane of the uh, uh, cell. Uh, so uh, this uh, is the ro uh, process. A role of electron acceptors, rate of biodegradation, you know, microorganisms can accept the electron. And then, uh, you know, uh, they convert different, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, chemicals uh, 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 in different form. For example, from oxygen to uh, water, uh, nitrate to uh, nitrous oxide or nitrogen gas, sulfate to hydrogen sulfide, or uh, you know, ferric to ferrous, and uh, they uh, get the uh, you know energy uh, through the electron transport chain and grow uh, 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 you know uh, from the uh, biodegradation of the biomass, anaerobic growth and biodegradation. By, uh, for example, organic matter. Organic matter uh, you can ferment uh, in absence of the oxygen. Some um, uh, bacteria, uh, lactic acid bacteria and other uh, bacteria can produce the acid uh, and uh, carbon dioxide and water. Uh, so uh, methanogens in case of, you know, uh, composting process, uh, at certain point methanogens, uh, you know, uh, start uh, uh, functioning and in absence of oxygen, they uh, convert biomass into methane. So methane, carbon dioxide, and water we can find in the uh, anaerobic digestion of the uh, 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 plant biomasses or other biomasses we can get used in the biogas plant. Uh, fixation of oxygen as a first step in biodegradation. Uh, so this is very important. The key step of biodegradation uh, is the fixation of oxygen. How? Uh, in the, this is the cell membrane of microorganisms which you want to use uh, in the uh, biodegradation process. So first step, uh, you know, uh, uh, this process, uh, oxidation reduction taken place, that means oxygen is fixed uh, 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 in the uh, first step and then the oxygen is used uh, to, uh, for example, this compound, aromatic compound is oxidized uh, and uh, uh, into uh, this, you know, phenolic compound. Uh, and uh, this conversion, bioconversion requires the oxygen and oxygen fixation is very important process. Uh, and NADH, you know, uh, contain the energy and energy is utilized to, to do that. So uh, uh, if this compound is uh, less toxic than this one, uh, then this is very fine. And this process is uh, this type of reaction. This is a simple reaction. I showed you uh, lots of reaction, oxidation, hydrolysis, and many things taken place during biodegradation. So further degradation of this one uh, is taken place. And finally, uh, cell biomass, uh, because uh, 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 microorganism multiply and produce the cell biomass and carbon dioxide is released. So biological waste treatment, managing microorganisms for environmental uh, cleanup is now uh, the modern way. Uh, uh, 10 into 10 to the minus six uh, chemicals are present in the environment. You can imagine these are man-made chemicals. Incredibly human being over the years 
uh, and centuries they synthesize lots of chemicals and they are uh, genobiotic. Some of them are obviously uh, natural compounds and uh, they are the genobiotics. Genobiotics means man-made 8 into 10 to the minus 6 and 1 into 10 to the 6 is recalcitrant. That means difficult. Recalcitrant means you can, uh, most of the microorganisms cannot degrade them and they are you know persistent uh, pollutant in the environment but very slowly some of the microorganisms can uh, degrade them but not really degradable point four into ten to the power six traded at uber 50 tons per year so uh, currently we are using um, uh, 50 tons at least per year uh, 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 about uh, 0.4 into 10 to the power six uh, a number of chemicals and toxicological or biodegradative data on only around 5,000 to 6,000 compounds. We have the available data of uh, toxicology or biodegradation, whether they are biodegradable in the environment or not. But large proportion of the, uh, you know, uh, man-made compounds or other uh, synthetic compounds, we have no data whether they are degradable or not. So lots of research is necessary. Municipal wastewater treatment, it has been uh, practiced since ancient times, but now we are using more advanced technology, biodegradation of industrial waste, as well as household waste. For example, petrochemicals, bulk chemical processes, textile dyes, leather uh, you know leather industry released lots of toxic substances and metal industry also we can uh, use uh, biodegradation uh, processes as well as effluent treatment processes by using different microorganisms remediation of contaminant and land in situ some contaminated uh, land especially uh, in the mining area uh, lands are contaminated with for example petroleum or other uh, toxic substances. Uh, uh, remediation is very important and people are now doing industrially uh, using the environmental biotechnology. So biological wastewater treatment the, uh, uh, or activated slash process, this is the ancient way. Uh, you can uh, collect the uh, wastewater in the uh, uh, tank, peak reservoir, and uh, allow them to, there are some process uh, 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 to settle the uh, suspended particles into the bottom uh, and uh, you will get the slurs. Uh, and there, those slurs contains heavy metals and many toxic substances. And the, those slurs you can use, uh, uh, you know, um, as, you know, uh, uh, how to say, making brick uh, or other uh, things so that you can confine them not to pollute the environment. So here is the uh, uh, process uh, in the, uh, this type of wastewater, classical wastewater conventional activated slash wastewater treatment system. Uh, you see uh, aeration on reactor. Reactor you need to uh, aerate because microorganisms so that they can function and influent uh, uh, that means the uh, polluted water enters here and then mechanical mixture you mix uh, by compress air, uh, you add the air, mix liquor, solid biomass. So solid biomass uh, is suspended and goes down and upper layer you can find cleaner, uh, 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 you know, effluent. Effluent, you know, you can get here and uh, uh, how to say uh, the uh, water uh, 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 you, you can uh, uh, treat uh, in a way so that you can remove the solid uh, waste as well as and get relatively uh, you know heavy metal free and other water uh, and this is the uh, treatment plant but this uh, treatment plant cannot be used to drink the uh, you know uh, treated water but there are uh, connecting other uh, treatment uh, plants uh, uh, in the advanced system, uh, biomembrane uh, or other technologies are used to clean the water uh, and it, it is possible to drink. And in many cities, big cities, people are using even uh, sewerage water uh, as a 
uh, as drinking water. So this is, uh, uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, enough for your today's lecture. And if you have any question, uh, I shall answer your question. So this is the time uh, for you to uh, ask the question because I uh, discussed some fundamentals uh, of, uh, you know, environmental uh, biotechnology and their applied uh, side also uh, uh, and genomics and metagenomics approaches and the principles of biodegradation uh, up to the wastewater uh, treatment, the conventional wastewater treatment. In our uh, next class, uh, we shall discuss more advanced method, how uh, uh, wastewater can be converted to uh, uh, water for drink uh, and uh, more advanced technology. Thank you very much for listening. So you can ask yes. some questions. Yes. Uh, one by one, please. Jahid, you first ask your question. Uh, Fatima, you can ask question, no problem, oh. because you are only four members attending the uh, uh, lecture. So one by one, uh, everyone will get the opportunity. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have a question uh, about um, microorganisms. Uh, like, uh, is it possible for a microorganism um, to collaborate its genome with uh, uh, a human genome uh, that uh, those are living in human body is it possible sir uh, yes uh, i told you human microbiome uh, project discovered uh, that uh, every adult human carry three to six pounds of microorganisms and they also estimated the diversity of microorganism in the human body uh, they found that nearly 150 species are there. Uh, they are bacteria, archaea, and others. And interestingly, uh, uh, they are evolved in a co-evolved in a way they can survive in the human body and get the energy from the uh, 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 you know uh, from uh, environment as well as from our uh, food and. Uh, uh, they are uh, not only getting the energy from us, what they are doing, they are helping us a lot for increasing the immunity, boosting immunity, digestion of the food, as well as keeping us really healthy. They are also involved in a uh, mechanism of triggering different, uh, uh, you know, uh, gene expression uh, in our uh, uh, genome. Uh, and human genome carries about uh, Thirty-three percent of the genes from the microorganisms. So your uh, 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 question is how genomically uh, uh, or genome analysis. How can we uh, get the benefit from the microorganisms? Yes, when we, uh, human genome sequence uh, have been done, uh, it was uh, you know robust job by the scientist. A large number of scientists and scientific institutes are involved there and uh, they found some of the strange genes which are not related to the uh, genes of our primate. That means other, uh, you know, primates, you know, uh, chimpanzee and other uh, uh, previous uh, homo erectus or other, uh, 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 you know, uh, earlier version of human. Uh, then uh, they looked at the microorganism um, present in the intestine and uh, other body parts, uh, for example, armpits or uh, different, even on, on your skin, there is a biofilm. Uh, you cannot remove them by using, you know, uh, soap and others, so they are beneficial. So uh, they found that uh, the source of the genes are the microorganisms. Uh, and even the virus, for example, coronavirus in uh, COVID-19, uh, a disease causing virus, SARS coronavirus 2. Uh, also, you know, uh, I guess uh, uh, have the ability to uh, inject a gene in our genome. You don't know uh, because we, uh, our genome also contains lots of viral uh, uh, genes and 
virus is an important tool for genetic engineering because virus can, uh, uh, you know, uh, introgress, uh, ability to introgress gene into the genome of um, the eukaryotic host organism. Uh, 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 is it okay with you, the answer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yahid? Sir, I have two questions. The first one is, sir, what would be the biotechnological approach if we want to use the microorganism in our body to fight various medical conditions? Uh, good uh, question. Uh, yes, uh, let me answer this question. Uh, what are the mic uh, microbiological uh, use uh, if we want to use the beneficial microorganisms for our health? Uh, that means, uh, suppose, uh, uh, I told you, uh, human uh, carries three to six pound of microorganism and adult human. That means all of we are not carrying exactly same amount, same diversity, same number of microorganisms because of our, you know, uh, living environment, because of our food, because of our health condition, because of our age, the diversity is uh, very. Uh, but uh, uh, scientists, uh, uh, a large number of uh, microorganisms that are uh, living in human body, uh, uh, scientists have discovered them. And some of them, uh, like lactic acid bacteria, bifidu, bifidu bacteria, they are being commercialized, commercialized as, you know, capsule or uh, tablet. So uh, they are highly beneficial for uh, digestion as well as immunity of human body. So uh, uh, you can take one tablet uh, which contains two billions of bacteria or like that. So if you take it, you can keep uh, increase your intestinal uh, microflora, the population, and it, uh, 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 it uh, would be helpful for your digestion, helpful for your immunity. Uh, and just a few years ago, a couple of years ago, scientists in USA, they found that now if you uh, take, you know, uh, uh, semi-digested food from the intestine from one, uh, you know, non-obese person to and transfer to the obese person because obesity is a big problem in USA, uh, 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 then uh, after uh, uh, several treatment, they found that obese person is uh, becoming, uh, you know, uh, uh, slim uh, and uh, it is a magic. Uh, that means uh, microflora in the obese person as well as non-obese person is uh, different. So microflora uh, that we are carrying, microbiota we are carrying, they have lots of potential to use as biotechnology, but we are still at the uh, beginning. Uh, several probiotic industries, you know, uh, billion dollar business they are doing, they are adding probiotic bacteria in the child food, as well as capsule tablet and other form of, uh, you know, application for human. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, is it okay, Jahid? Yes, sir. And uh, your second question? So my second question is, sir, if we use a so modified microorganism for bio biodegradation, Sir, uh, if due to the environment after some time, uh, the microorganism shows uh, uh, shows uh, activities that are harmful to the environment, sir, how do you control such condition? Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, I told you uh, the principle of microorganism, how they biodegrade uh, the uh, toxic materials as well as biomass. Uh, the principle is okay and when you wish to apply the naturally available microorganisms which you discovered from the nature they have the limited capacity to uh, do the job uh, but you need uh, uh, a rapid uh, you know performance uh, for remediation of uh, pollutant as well as biodegradation of the uh, polluted substances. In that case, genetic engineering is considered one of the important tools. So in case of genetic engineering, you can uh, upgrade the uh, micro naturally available biodegradable or useful microorganisms by introducing uh, the gene 
and increasing the expression of gene, for example, 5,000 uh, fold or like that, so that they have the higher tolerance uh, and higher efficiency in doing uh, the job. Uh, but uh, question is uh, to use, uh, you know, uh, GM, genetically modified organism for uh, the environmental uh, mitigation or remediation, uh, there is a question of uh, biosafety, whether this organism uh, is really safe for the environment or members in the ecosystem. So this is why we need to pass through the uh, biosafety guideline and uh, check whether they are producing any toxic substances or not, whether they are uh, somehow harmful to the environment or not. So before releasing, uh, uh, we have to follow the biosafety guidelines to ensure that the microorganisms, uh, which is a, a GMO, genetically modified organisms, and it is safe for doing the job. And in that case, you know, uh, 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 people use that organism in the uh, container, for example, in the uh, 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 confined uh, situation to make, for example, new drug, new antibiotic, or even in the effluent treatment. Uh, and uh, so that uh, uh, risk of the environment you can minimize. But even though uh, people have uh, some uh, 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 environmentalists have some, uh, you know, skeptic view. But if you change one or two gene, and if you know the, uh, you know, uh, you uh, know the knowledge of the function of the uh, the gene, uh, a product, uh, then uh, there is no uh, a risk. I think because you are, are not changing the whole genome, you are changing specific gene uh, and uh, allowing it to express. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, so that it can work like an industrial tool. Uh, so it should not be harmful for the environment. As a biotechnologist, uh, I can uh, tell you uh, uh, this and ensure you, but uh, even uh, to uh, give the confidence to the society who are not biotechnologists, uh, uh, we have to follow the biosafety guideline. Uh, thank you, Jahid, for nice question. Thank you, sir. Sir, if a situation of, uh, uh, like uh, a genetically modified organism is uh, not harmful for environment or for um, consumption uh, by human, uh, but after biodegradation of that uh, organism, uh, uh, maybe uh, it, uh, it will be harmful for environment. Then um, what will be the decision about this type of organism? Uh, this is a good point. Actually, when we do the genetic engineering, we change, you know, one gene. Uh, one gene means, you know, a cup of uh, water uh, for the Bay of Bengal. So whole genome is too big. Uh, so uh, we change only one gene. And you, if you apply that organism uh, in the environment, uh, obviously, uh, uh, we change a gene and we check the, uh, uh, its function, gene product, and we have the full knowledge and we do the job for the human benefit. But uh, uh, it is true, genetic engineering can be used to destroy the environment and even kill the human if you, uh, you know, uh, uh, allow uh, to uh, express or do the genetic engineering for making the bioweapons, this is a different story. But your question is, when we engineer a microorganism and apply it to the environment, a microorganism also evolve uh, 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 in the environment and uh, change its genome uh, uh, slowly. But in that case, if it becomes the uh, you know, uh, uh, harmful for the environment as well as for the society, what would happen? Uh, you know, uh, in the environment, there are millions, billions of microorganisms, not it is, uh, you know, present alone. So there are huge, you know, uh, uh, cross interactions between the genus level, uh, phylum level, as well as species level, and no organism can become uh, so uh, uh, harmful. 
very few organisms in this earth are harmful for the human or other organisms. Most of them, they love to use the natural resources for their growth and development. So the chances of uh, uh, becoming uh, a dangerous microorganism, uh, which you are releasing, uh, is very, very low. Uh, but uh, obviously, any microorganism present in the uh, even non-GM microorganisms through evolutionary process can become a, uh, you know, uh, the toxic uh, microorganisms. I can tell you that uh, initially, when uh, the uh, life was emerging uh, in the earth, nobody was, you know, harmful to uh, others. Uh, for example, there were no uh, plant pathogen, there were no human pathogen. Due to competition uh, over the period of time and uh, uh, e evolutionary process and pressure of getting the uh, energy and resources, uh, one becomes uh, uh, enemy to others. And it, uh, the earth is becoming complex and complex. And in future, one mil uh, million years later uh, or uh, uh, five million years later, uh, even a naive pathogen, which is uh, a saprophyte now, can become a, uh, uh, you know, uh, that microorganism can become a deadly pathogen for human. I can tell you one very important story. For example, uh, 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 Vibrio cholerae, you know, uh, this pathogen, Vibrio cholerae, do you know it? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Vibrio cholerae, what is, uh, why it is important? Sir, uh, it causes um, uh, disease like cholera. Yes, very good. It causes disease like cholera, and cholera is a dangerous disease. But Vibrio cholerae, actually, it was a saprophytic naive pathogen, not human pathogenic. Um, over the years of uh, infection by the viruses, environmental viruses, uh, Vibrio cholerae, uh, you know, uh, perceived or received the virulent gene uh, uh, to infect the human. And our Bangladeshi scientist, Dr. Shah Farooq, he discovered the evolutionary story, uh, how Vibrio cholerae uh, 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 has become uh, a dangerous pathogen of human. And he published the paper in Nature. Uh, so uh, you cannot guarantee a, uh, wh what would be happen uh, over the course of time. Uh, we always consider, you know, uh, uh, our lifetime or lifetime of three or f uh, a five generation or like this. Evolution does not take place so fast. Evolution taken place very slowly. For example, there is a, a, a concept that plastic is not biodegradable, and metals are not biodegradable. Glass are not uh, glasses are not biodegradable. But in true sense, it is not true. Everything is biodegradable. But uh, plastic, uh, polythene, or glasses and other metals, they are degraded very slowly. So in your lifetime, maybe and uh, not become carbon dioxide and water. It takes 250 years or uh, 500 years uh, to degrade fully. Uh, but we consider everything relatively. So Einstein's uh, theory of relativity uh, uh, is very important for any statement as well as uh, uh, you know any scientific discovery. We claim that it is. Uh, uh, the technology for this job. But you know that all the technologies have the A's. For example, your mobile phone, the mobile phone you are using now, after 10 years, you will see it, uh, it, uh, it will be uh, obsolete and nobody will use this type of mobile phone. New things will come. So like li living organism, uh, non-living uh, technologies, uh, 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 you know, have also lifespan. Uh, and uh, this is the evolutionary process uh, uh, which is going on in the living organism as well as in the non-living organism. Uh, thank you, Fatima. Thank you, sir. Any question from uh, Gina? Sir, 
that is it safe for humans to intake cultured probiotics? But I think sir, you gave the answer in uh, as Jahid's question. Yes, it, it is. Uh, it is safe uh, because industrially, uh, uh, people have been using cultured probiotics since long. Uh, in the child food as well as you know full uh, food for the uh, old people because they have uh, uh, they need more probiotics even uh, you know if you take too much antibiotic uh, your intestinal microflora also uh, killed in that case uh, in the uh, western world they have available probiotic capsule or tablet uh, when i visit uh, you know any western country uh, I always bring some probiotic uh, tablet and capsule. They are safe, uh, and uh, they are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, they have no side effect. And good point uh, is that in Bangladesh you can take lots of probiotic by uh, taking you know a fermented food like uh, a card, a doi. Uh, a, a cup of doi contains billions of uh, lactobacillus, uh, and they are very helpful because lactobacillus can produce lactoferrin, a protein, which is very, very uh, uh, useful for the uh, human health. Uh, it is antimicrobial as well as induce immunity uh, in uh, human health. So uh, rather than taking milk, uh, you uh, you'd better uh, to take uh, yogurt or uh, curd uh, because you can get additional uh, living organisms uh, uh, for uh, helping you uh, uh, digestion as well as increase the uh, uh, po uh, population diversity as well as number of population in your intestine. Uh, our intestine without microorganisms cannot work and we cannot survive without, uh, you know, uh, beneficial microorganisms. There uh, was a, an exp experiment in case of rat and other animals, and it has been found that uh, without microorganisms, uh, you know, multicellular animals cannot survive uh, for a week or so. Uh, similarly, without microorganism, uh, I think no multicellular organism can survive, even the plant. Uh, plant uh, rhizosphere, if you make free from the uh, microorganisms, uh, microorganisms are cooking uh, uh, the, you know, the organic and inorganic sources of nutrient and convert them into uh, soup-like materials that is uh, plant uh, essential elements come uh, to the ionic form available from then plant can uptake because plant cannot digest uh, the organic and inorganic insoluble materials. Uh, present in the soil. So microorganisms are really crucial for uh, the better survival and good health of the uh, multicellular organisms. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Sumaya, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Do you have any question? Uh, sir, I uh, can't hear too much uh, today because uh, uh, because of load shedding, uh, sir. But I have a question, and that is, sir, is biotechnology is totally a microorganism based field? No, biotechnology is not only microorganism based. Biotechnology uh, means any living organisms uh, and their derivatives uh, uh, you can use as micro uh, uh, as biotechnology. So, for example, we can use uh, other organism, algae, we can use even plant, we can use animal, uh, we can use everything and get the benefit from uh, that uh, organism. For example, biotechnology, uh, uh, you mean the environmental biotechnology. In environmental biotechnology, we can introduce a gene from any other organisms to the microorganisms if we use microorganisms as a tool for biodegradation as well as bioremediation. But we can use plant, which is called phytoremediation. So uh, uh, you can use even other organisms, earthworm. Earthworm you can use. Uh, uh, so uh, not only limited to the, uh, you know, uh, microorganisms.
microorganisms, but microorganisms are really wonderful uh, tools for uh, 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 industrial uh, processes, uh, as well as geochemical nutrient cycling and microorganisms are easy to study at a genomic level, identify the gene and scientists uh, over the years, you know, uh, Craig Benter, you know his name, uh, he synthesized the genome of uh, a living uh, bacterium. So artificially, uh, a bacterium which can replicate in the laboratory have been created by scientists as uh, advanced, uh, uh, you know, biotechnology, uh, which is called synthetic biotechnology or synthetic genomics. So system biology and uh, lots of new, uh, you know, uh, uh, advancement is taken place uh, in the field of biotechnology. Biotechnology is advancing to the system biology and synthetic biology. So uh, whole DNA you can uh, synthesize. In future, you can see a very big DNA can be synthesized and even a living creature you can uh, uh, design uh, by computer programming. And uh, uh, Craig Benter already proved it and it has been published in uh, Science, uh, uh, also uh, his another publication in Nature. So uh, you can browse it, synthetic bacteria or living form in the uh, Google, you can find it. But we have some limitation, ethical lim limitation. Uh, biotechnology can make lots of dangerous weapons, bioweapons, even much more powerful virus than the COVID uh, 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 that uh, causes the COVID-19 disease, uh, SARS-CoV-2. So, but uh, we have uh, to be very uh, ethically restricted as well as we have to uh, uh, consider only the uh, benefit of human as well as the other organisms living in this earth. So our uh, we have some limitation uh, to use the technology. Any question? Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. If you have uh, no question, then I shall uh, end today's uh, lecture. And I'm sorry for your inconvenience for shifting the uh, lecture, but uh, I hope your next le lecture will be uh, uh, on uh, the schedule. And uh, what is uh, most important for you uh, to uh, browse the internet as well as my slides? Uh, you know, in the classroom or in the lecture, the slides I am getting, uh, giving you very gist. So to get more information, uh, you can browse the Google and get more, more uh, information regarding the environmental biotechnology. Uh, I am expecting, you know, highly interactive uh, uh, term uh, with uh, all of you uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy environmental biotechnology and biosafety course uh, and learn something from this course not only for your you know graduation but also for your life and better understanding of nature thank you very much